Welcome everyone. Welcome to the May speaker series, the history of cornerstones or the history of the cornerstone. My name is Stephanie Desjardins and I'm an associate in the library and museum coming up on my one year anniversary here in the Masonic family. I work closely with the librarian as well as the head archivist and assist with daily guided tours. I've been fortunate or was fortunate to assist with the special exhibits we have on display for our museum celebrating the Masonic Temple of Philadelphia's 150th anniversary this year. Uh, the exhibit includes aprons worn at the building's cornerstone ceremony dedication, um, the ceremony being on June 24th, 1868, and items from the day, along with relics included from the building, its initial cornerstone. Learning more about the building's cornerstone laying got me thinking of cornerstone laying ceremonies in general. Um, why is the cornerstone something that we pay attention to? Why do we celebrate it? Why are Freemasons, a speculative Masonic fraternity, organizing and conducting public ceremonies? Um, the cornerstone, um, so the cornerstone laying ceremony is a long-standing tradition that dates back to ancient times. It has been used by various cultures and groups throughout the history to con to, con <laughs> to commemorate important events, most notably the construction of buildings and monuments. For thousands of years, cornerstones have been an important part of building construction. In ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamian Mesopotamian cultures, a foundation ritual was performed as a way to protect the building. This involved placing foundation deposits, which were hollowed out stones filled with symbolic items, such as a small vessel or sacrifices. These deposits were commonly placed at the cornerstone for an important <clears throat> or important points, such as the entrance of temples, palaces, tombs, and forts. By doing this, the original content of the building would be preserved until it was demolished. In modern times, the cornerstone laying ceremony is most commonly associated with Freemasons, who use the ritual as a way to mark the beginning of construction for the new building, or for a new building. We see Freemason involvement with cornerstone ceremonies, such as since the early days of the fraternity. Today, we will delve into the history of the cornerstone and its significance. We will study the who, what, where, and why the cornerstone um, and explore how and when Freemasons became associated with the cornerstone laying ceremonies. We'll take a chronological approach to examine the history of the cornerstone, focusing on various cultures um, and then additionally, we'll trace the evolution of these events through history, including the Freemason cornerstone laying ceremony. Okay. What is a cornerstone? So according, or according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, um, it adds some more context to the cornerstone definition. Cornerstone, ceremonial buildings, building block, usually placed ritually in the outer wall of the building to commemorate its dedication. Sometimes the stone is solid with a date or other inscription. More typically, it's hollowed out to contain metal receptacles for newspapers, photographs, currency, etc., reflecting current customs, with a view of their historical use when the building is remodeled or demolished. Until the development of modern construction, the stone was usually at the corner, possibly the first foundation stone, and it was a real support. The modern cornerstone need not actually support, need not be positioned at a corner, and need not be part of the foundation. Often it's placed ornamentally in the facade of an interior wall or floor. Um, from the original position of the and function of the cornerstone arose 
figures of speech in many languages referring to cornerstone or foundation stones of character, faith, liberty, or other excellence. Early customs connected with the cornerstones were related to the study of the stars and their religious significance. Buildings were laid with astronomical precision in the relation to points of, of the compass with emphasis on corners. Cornerstones symbolize seeds from which buildings would germinate and rise. Various religious rituals and Bible references spread and perpetuated the cornerstone custom and company and ceremonies have been marked with precisions, processions, sacrifices, sprinklings of blood and water and wide participation by rulers, priests, and other dignitaries who use the, Mason, who use the Mason's trowel, often made of gold or silver. Quite a long explanation from Britannica. Um, so let's start with the stonemasons. The oldest known cornerstone placed by a stonemason is difficult to pinpoint as many ancient structures have unclear construction dates and cornerstones have not always been used as a distinct feature. However, one of the oldest examples of stone masonry can be found in Gobekli Tepe, located in modern day Turkey. This site, which is believed to have been constructed around 9600, 700 BCE, features monumental stone pillars and T-shaped megaliths demonstrating advanced stonemasonry skills in the Neolithic age. Symbolic um, stonemasons have used cornerstones for several reasons, um, including symbolic significance. The cornerstone is an important element in construction and it symbolizes the beginning of our foundation of a building, noting the commencement of a new venture. There's a aesthetic, aesthetic appeal <laughs> A cornerstone may be engraved with inscriptions, dates, or other decoration, um, which would commemorate the construction or hold symbolic meaning. The stonemason would typically take care to select a high quality stone for this purpose, contributing to the building's overall appearance. Structural importance as the cornerstone serves as a reference point for the rest of the building's layout. Ensuring the walls and other elements are aligned and structured correctly. It helps provide stability and ensures the integrity of the building structure. If the cornerstone is set properly, the stonemason could or could be assured that the other corners of the building would be at the appropriate angles as well. Hence, the cornerstone came to be came to represent the element that was instrumental in maintaining the unity of existence and life. In ancient Egypt, the cornerstone laying ceremony involved priests marking the four corners of the foundation with the assistance of the Pharaoh or high level officials. Sacred offerings and prayers to gods like Horus and Ra were performed to ensure the structure's stability and divine protection. In Egypt, through the exploration and discovery, we see examples of foundation rituals. At the Temple of Karnak, carvings from the 13th century BCE portray a series of rites to, con to construct and dedicate a new temple to Amon. The carvings were arranged from right to left with six episodes that showed the building, the building ceremonies. The first is stretching the core to sur survey the area. The second, scattering gypsum powder, powder cast into a foundation trench to create a protective boundary around the temple. Then there was the hacking, the hacking the earth where the Pharaoh prepares the temple's foundations with a hoe and then molding the first brick, which we see on the slide here. Um, using a wooden mold, Ramsey II forms a mud brick. And then here we see dedicating the temple to the Lord where Ramses dedicates the com uh, completed temple to Amon. And then finally, presenting an offering of completion of the temple.
We will move forward to King Solomon's Temple. 1900 to 1931 um, is when we see the emergence of King Solomon's Temple. King Solomon's cornerstone is a significant part of biblical history as it is associated with the construction of the first temple in Jerusalem. Solomon was known as one of the wisest and wealthiest rulers in history of ancient Israel. And he reigned from 1970 to 19, 1931 BCE. The Bible mentions King Solomon's construction of the temple in Jerusalem in 1 Kings and 2 Chronicles. According to these texts, Solomon was asked with, with building a temple to house the Ark of the Covenant, following the plans given to his father, David, by God. Though the Bible does not specifically refer to King Solomon laying a cornerstone for the temple, the significance of the cornerstone is mentioned throughout scripture. For example, Psalms 118, verse 22, it says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, which some interpret as a symbol of Jesus Christ and later Christian theology. Theory suggests that a a significant stone or the foundation stone was the location where the Ark of the Covenant containing the Ten Commandments was placed. The temple's construction and dedication hold immense historical and religious significance in the Jewish, Christian, and in Islamic traditions. The first temple was ultimately destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BCE during their, during their conquest of Jerusalem. Moving a little further to Japan, um, Japanese society also has a deep history with foundation stones. One example of a traditional Japanese foundation is the Ishio Toshi method, which involves creating a foundation using a series of stones. This method dates back to the Joman period, which is 14,000 to 300 BCE. The stones were placed beneath a wooden post, which provided a structural support for the building. The Ishitoshu method is often used in the construction of Shinto shrines and traditional Japanese homes. Established in 607 CE and located in Nara, Horiji is one of the oldest wooden structures in Japan. The base of the pagoda showcases the use of stones in, a, in alignment with wooden pillars, providing an early example of foundation stones in Japan. The five-story pagoda stands at 112 feet high and is one of the oldest wooden buildings in the world. The wood used in the central pillar of the, of the pagoda is estimated to have been felled in 594 CE. The central pillar rests three meters below the surface of the massive foundation stone stretching, stretching into the ground. At its base, a relic believed to be the fragment of bones of Buddha is enshrined. Around it, four sculpted scenes from the life of the Buddha face in four cardinal directions. Here we have a slide that notes from 1446 CE in England um, at King's College Chapel, a foundation stone that was laid by King Henry VI. So we really see um, similarities between foundation stones and cornerstones, and they hold really similar um, purposes and at times are um, interchangeable. So for Freemasons, the cornerstone laying ceremonies have symbolic and historical significance. These ceremonies mark the beginning of a new construction project, such as a public building, a temple, or a monument by setting the consecrating, by setting and consecrating the stone, cornerstone. The laying of the cornerstone represents the foundation of the building, both metaphorically and literally. The ceremony itself is rooted in ancient customs with significant meanings attached. The root of Freemasons' involvement in cornerstone ceremonies 
aligns with the first Grand Lodge that was established, established in London, England in 1717. An early reference to the laying of the cornerstone by a Masonic body appears in Miss Weekly Journal uh, on uh, May 26, 1722 for the building of St. Martin's in London, which we see here. Um, paraphrasing a little, um, the journal notes that it's be that it is being a royal parish church, King George I sent, this, sent his lord and surveyor general attending by brother Gibb, the architect of the grand pile, with many Freemasons in solemn procession from the palace to level the footstone of the southeast corner by giving it three great knocks with a mallet in the king's name and laying upon it a purpose of 100 guineas. When the trumpeters sounded, all joined in joyful acclamations and the craftsmen went to the tavern to drink it and toast to the king and the craft. The first recorded formal and official Masonic cornerstone laying ceremony um, that was um, happened with um, the new royal in, uh, infirmary. <laughs> of Edinburgh by the Earl of Cromtree, um, Grand Master of Scottish Masons on August 2nd, 1738. Um, the event was written 66 years later in 1804 by Alexander Lawry um, and his history of Freemasonry. He describes a simple ceremony. When the company came to a ground, the Grand Master and his brethren of free and accepted Masons surrounded the plan of the foundation hand in hand and the Grand Master Mason, along with the press representatives of the managers of the Royal Infirmary, having come to the east corner of the foundation where the stone was to be laid, placed the same in its bed, and after the right honorable and Lord Provost had laid a medal under it, which in turns gave three strokes upon the stone with an iron mallet, which was succeeded by three clarins of the trumpet, three huzzas, three claps of the hands. The practice of Masonic cornerstone ceremony soon spread to America. Since the late 18th century, Freemasons have laid cornerstones to some of America's most prominent buildings. Some notable buildings that received Masonic cornerstone ceremonies were the White House, the US Capitol Building, and, Smith and the Smithsonian Institution. The entire Masonic cornerstone ceremony is an elaborate ritual now. The plum, square, and level are used to prove the stone. In the Masonic cornerstone ceremony, the stone is chucked using ancient tools to be certain it is square, plumb, straight, and level because it is building constructed, because a building constructed on poor foundation is not strong. The Grand Master then blesses the cornerstone by pouring corn, signifying grain, wine, and oil. The corn, wine, and oil each have their own special symbolism. The corn of the nourishment symbolizes health and hardiness of the workers. The wine of the refreshment symbolizes plenty. The oil of joy symbolizes peace and joy. The Grand Master is asked that these benefits and blessings be bestowed upon the project and the people by the great architect of the universe. This procedure for laying of the cornerstone with Masonic ceremonies was written down by the Masons as far back as the late 18th century. In 1797, Thomas Smith West, Thomas Smith Webb published the Freemasons Monitor, his version of William Preston's 1772 illustrations of masonry adopted for American masonry and in his ritual shows the introduction of corn, wine, and oil, as we just read through. The test of the trueness of the stone 
and now almost universal praise from the Grand Master that the stone is well-formed, true, and trusty. The Grand Master strikes the stone three times with his gavel and states, to the glory of God, the everlasting father and great architect of the universe. This cornerstone having been duly tested, duly tested by the ancient implement of Freemasonry, I declare it to be formed, true, trusty, and laid to ample form. In contrast to the sacrifices and superstitions of ancient times, Freemasons and their ceremonies have made the cornerstone a symbol of individual Mason and the sacrifices of labor, labor and time necessary to build a moral and Masonic edifice. Today, cornerstones are hollowed out, placing small objects inside, like coins, photographs, newspapers, or a list of those who erected the building. It's wholly up to the committee in charge, um, in charge and their imagination. This tradition includes a subtle nod to its origins. In Freemasonry, he who hunts for the symbol behind the symbol will find from the cornerstone the need to sacrifice in time, effort, and thought at the beginning of every effort and of one's Masonic journey. Every Mason must make those sacrifices if they choose to play an integral part in bettering themselves and the lives, lives of those in their community. The significances um, for the Freemason cornerstone laying ceremonies include symbolism and unity. Uh, the cornerstone establishes the alignment and the position of the entire building. It signifies the importance of unity and harmony within the fraternity and emphasizes the essential nature of, a strong, of strong principles. Spiritual significance. In Freemasonry, the cornerstone also carries a spiritual meaning as it represents the cornerstone of the building that King Solomon built for the Lord. In this context, it symbolizes the initiation of spiritual progress and foundation of the, per of the personal journey within the fraternity. Continuity and tradition. The cornerstone laying ceremony maintain a connection to the past by preserving the ancient customs and practices of the fraternity. This link to history ensures that the foundation values of the organization endure. Contribution to society. The ceremonies often coincide with the construction of significant public buildings or monuments, which demonstrate the important, importance of community, public service, um, public service to the Freemasonry, to the Freemason fraternity. Physical cornerstones used in ceremonies in which Masons are erecting buildings tr traditionally show the date, the name of the Grand Lodge, the Grand Master, and Masonic emblem. However, however, that's not always the case. Cornerstones have been part of the construction or dedication of many federal buildings um, and seats of state government since the beginning of our country. Brother Benjamin Franklin while Grand Master of Pennsylvania established the tradition beginning with the cornerstone laying at the State House in Philadelphia. And Brother George Washington laid the cornerstone of our nation's Capitol building. Today, Freemasons around the country are proud to carry on the tradition that our forefathers began centuries ago. And they're proud to uphold truth and moral char characteristics associated with the cornerstone and understand the necessary um, sacrifices uh, that must be made to better our lives and communities. Here we have um, a listing of prominent cornerstone laying ceremonies that happened in the 1700s and 1800s. Um, it includes the president's house, State Capitol building, which George Washington presided over, the Battle of Bunker Hill Monument, which included Lafayette. We also see the Smithsonian and Washington Monument, 
Um, and of course, the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. We have 1900s and 2000s. Um, at the beginning, there was the Washington National Cathedral. We have the George Washington Masonic National Memorial in Alexandria, Virginia in 1923. And then we see in 2023, uh, they performed a reenactment of the George Washington um, Memor Masonic Memorial's corners cornerstone laying ceremony. And then here we have a few different examples of cornerstone laying ceremonies. Um, the top left is George Washington, our only um, painting out of the three portrait or four portraits. Um, and this is for the US Capitol. The gavel that he used at the, at the Capitol um, was also used for, I should say the gavel and the trowel, I believe, were used for these other ceremonies as well that we see. Um, so to the right, we have the cornerstone laying ceremony for the DAR building from 1904. And we see Teddy Roosevelt, he's second from the right. At the bottom is, the George Washington Masonic Memorial in Alexandria, Virginia. And then the bottom left, we see FDR. Uh, I believe this is at the Apex Building in, D in DC in 1937. wanted to do a little highlighting of our Grand Lodge cornerstone ceremony. Here is one of the pictures taken of the day. We have the committee and grand officers sitting, um, I believe that's the east. And we also use the gavel um, that was used by George Washington for the US Capitol cornerstone ceremony. We have a couple different relics that are on display in our exhibit hall now. Um, you can tell it was quite a events for the 1868 cornerstone ceremony. They had a banquet, um, the menu, and um, evening was hosted at the American Academy of Music here in Philadelphia. And then the center picture is an excerpt from our dedication book that was written after the building was constructed just outlining everything that had, um, everything having to do with the build, uh, the construction and decoration of this building. Okay. So I wanted to do, just summarize that uh, the Freemason cornerstone laying ceremonies symbolize the importance of unity, spirit, spirituality, continuity, and community service within the organization. And it's really what was seen in cornerstone ceremonies throughout, throughout um, history. They serve to reaffirm the fraternity's commitment to their shared values and beliefs. By tracing the significance of the cornerstone from antiquity to modern times, it's clear that it has a, a certain degree of importance. Buildings throughout history have been monumental events at times, changing the landscape and energy of the area of its construct that it's of its constructed. 
For Freemasons, laying a cornerstone is one of the few times in Masonic ritual where the speculative, speculative Masons of today can act as operative Masons. By laying cornerstones, the Freemasons have shown that they both desire and take great pride in building and helping to lay the foundation upon which all good institutions of society are built. Cornerstone ceremonies are an important aspect of architectural history, symbolizing foundational principles, connecting generations through tradition, fostering community involvement, and preserving our historical records for generations to come. Well, without any questions, I think we can wrap up today. Um, we appreciate you um, joining and please take care.